He was a master of creating an innovation culture through this process. Fourth competency of innovation, mastermind collaboration. Edison was a collaborator. A lot of times we think of him working by himself. But in fact, he had thousands of employees and dozens of employees in his own laboratories. How did he bring these people together in teams? What were his secrets? These were some of the things I had a chance to look at. And finally, the fifth competency of innovation, super value creation. Edison realized that it wasn't enough just to invent for inventing's sake. It was important to invent for a purpose, for an audience, for a market. So we see Edison going out into the marketplace and talking with consumers actually testing things in the actual environment in which they would be used. So very modern techniques that we would actually be surprised about today that he used. So we're here to celebrate the products and the individuals who demonstrate this gold standard of excellence, this approach to innovation which is robust and powerful in our economy today. This process has unfolded over a series of months. Nominations came forward from individuals involved in the businesses that you'll see today and also from other quarters into the Edison Awards Steering Committee. The Steering Committee consists of myself as the chairperson and five other individuals from various areas of industry and academia. We went through all the nominations and selected an array of finalists whom you'll hear about this afternoon. From that point forward, a group called the Marketing Executives Networking Group, which is a very high-level professional organization of individuals who have achieved a vice president level or higher, voted on these finalists. And today, you will hear who has won in each category the gold, the silver, or the bronze. As well, we are delighted to celebrate the achievements of two individuals today through the Edison Achievement Award. This is an award that has been granted as far back as 1987 to individuals who demonstrate the qualities of Edison himself. Persistence, charisma, optimism, the willingness to experiment and take risk the understanding of what it takes to create a culture of innovation and then to nurture it, to create teams that are powerful and bonded together who will go out and connect with the marketplace in just the right way to create success. So I hope that you will enjoy the next 90 minutes or so as we celebrate innovation in the spirit of Edison himself and as we learn a little more about the contributions of Thomas Edison to our world today. What I'd like to ask you to do is, as you hear the names of the gold, silver, and bronze winners announced, if you would hold your applause until the end, and then those individuals who are here or who may be here from those companies are welcome to stand if they wish, and we can all recognize you. After the ceremony, we have all the awards in the back corner here and we welcome you to step back and receive yours. So I'd like to get started and introduce the presenter for our first category. You can follow along with the categories in your program, which you may have picked up when you checked in earlier this afternoon. The first individual I'd like to recognize is Mr. Robert Muth, who is the Vice President of Client Consulting Services at Nielsen Basies, headquartered in Covington, Kentucky. Rob will introduce our finalists for the 2009 Edison Awards Science and Medical category, which is one of the most hotly contested categories this year. Nielsen Basies is the world's leading provider of pre-market consumer insights for marketers in industries as diverse as pharmaceuticals, durables, and consumer packaged goods. Nielsen Basies analyzes markets using a proprietary approach combining primary consumer research with state-of-the-art forecasting techniques that estimate the sales potential of new product initiatives prior to market entry. Rob works with a wide variety of clients to help them grow through successful innovation of their brands. 
The 2009 Edison Awards is also proud to have Nielsen Basies as a sponsor of this year's event. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Mr. Robert Muth. In a radical statement for his day, Thomas Edison believed that the physicians of the future would focus on wellness and preventive care rather than disease alone. He stated, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human body, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. Also in the early 1900s, Edison and his teams worked in collaboration with Madame Marie Curie of France uncovering the secrets of radium and radiation. Their work led to the development of the fluoroscope, which became the foundation for modern X-ray technology. So clearly Thomas Edison had some pretty visible thinking and relevant thinking for this category of science and medical. You may be asking yourselves, what does this guy, Muth, have to do with this category of science and medical? Because you see, I, I deal with innovation almost exclusively, exclusively in my work and have done that for about 10 years, but really very little in the, specifically in the science and medical arena. So I too was pondering my relevance to this category a few days ago, and I was reading a book. I was reading Bill Bryson's book, The Life and Times of the Thunderbolt Kid. Now if you haven't read it, it's a really sweet memoir of growing up in the 1950s in central in Midwestern United States. In the first few chapters, Bryson describes many of the innovations that came out of the 1950s. Some of those are quite mundane, you know, meat grinders, TV dinners, instant coffee, and everyone's favorite legacy of the 50s, suburban sprawl. But the funny thing was in this book is what Bryson describes from the pioneering experiments in over-engineering in the 1950s. Everything from pneumatic tubes that would whisk your cash from the register to the accounting department at the department store at the speed of, speed of air and into the, into the global economy. He also described atomic toilets, which uh, I won't go into detail here, uh, but again, a great example of over-engineering. I contrast these tragic examples of flabby engineering and murky consumer benefits with our 2009 nominees in the science and medical category which have such robust consumer insights at their core. Because I think sometimes I at least would think of innovation in science and medical as perhaps very functional, very problem solution oriented. Um, but these products not only solve important problems, but they tap into some very powerful insights about their target consumers. And whether it's a medical device or instant coffee, um, that practice of insight driven innovation is what unites all successful innovations. So without further ado, I would like to announce the finalists of the science and medical category. They are, first, 23andMe. It's a revolutionary in-home diagnostic kit that uses cells present in saliva to analyze over half a million characteristics of an individual's genetic traits. The results are mailed to a certified laboratory and made available to the client in about eight to 10 weeks via a secure website. The next is Insight from Nuvo Research, a high-speed transdermal drug testing protocol that performs chemical experiments 100 times faster than current protocols for identifying the optimal size for transdermal molecules. Insight's approach means better, more effective transdermal drugs can be placed into clinical trials for testing, and drug development costs can be reduced dramatically over time. Third, Omnipod an insulin management system from Insulet, offering insulin-dependent diabetics the first reliable wireless means to frequently monitor blood sugar levels without significant lifestyle interference. The Omnipod comes with disposable, lightweight, self-adhesive insulin pods worn underneath clothing on the arm, and a wireless handheld device the size of a Blackberry. <laughs> 